Wild iris, or yellow flag, is one of Offaly's loveliest waterside plants. And it belongs to the major subdivision of the flowering plants in which the leaves are typically sword-like. And if you look at the flowers themselves, you can see that the, the parts of the flower are in, in trees or multiples of three. Uh, there isn't the same rigid distinction between the sepals and petals, uh, for which reason sometimes these outer floral organs are actually referred to as tepals. So, here's the flower, uh, a typical flower of the iris family, and as you look at it, uh, it can be quite puzzling to work out what the different parts are. Um, you can see there are multiples of three. We've got these three outer petals here, We've got three more, much smaller petally structures on the inside, and then these strange looking things uh, with frilly edges in the middle. Now, uh, this is, this is the flag petal. The, the, the function of this particular petal is to wave at passing insects, basically. And once they're attracted by, uh, by the colour and by the patterning, you'll see that there, there's um, a very elaborate pattern of uh, darker coloured markings directing the insect towards the centre of the flower and the nectar. And at the top of this flag petal, you can see there's a curved landing platform where the, the insect is, go is going to land. Uh, so you've got these three petals. You've got three much smaller petal-like structures behind them here. Uh, and if we were to dissect the flower now, look at the base of those, you'll see that the base of those very much smaller petals is kind of uh, curved around uh, to form a, a, a tube that helps to direct the proboscis of the visiting insect down towards the nectar at the base of the flower here. Now, so they're the, 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 the petals. But when you're looking for the stamens and the pistil, that's the female part and male part of the flower, uh, it's a bit more difficult because they are, they're, they're very unusual, very characteristic of the family. This structure here, this petal-like structure above the landing platform, uh, that's, that's the, the, the style and stigma. Uh, the style is actually this limb, this uh, longer part at the back. Uh, and if you look, if you pull it, we pull it back here, you'll see that the, a single stamen is cradled in a, 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 a groove in that styler column there behind it. And the stigma is this tiny structure in the middle. You see, you see that. This tiny structure in the middle of the frills at the top. And what happens basically is this. The pollinator lands on the landing platform here, uh, moves into the flower, and the first thing it's going to come in, in contact with is the outer surface of, of the stigma. And when it does so, if it's carrying a load of pollen from a previously visited flower, it'll, it'll deposit the, the pollen on, on the stigma. And then as it moves a bit further back, uh, it's going to come in contact with the, uh, with, with the anther of the stamen, which you can see opens downward so that it's going to liberally coat the back of the visiting insect with, with pollen. Uh, now, uh, the insect will then begin to probe for the nectar. And the nectar at the base of the flower I mean, to access the nectar, the visitor is going to have, need a tongue at least seven, centimet seven millimetres long. Uh, and to extract all the nectar from the nectar, it's, it would need a, a, a tongue that's at least 15 millimetres long. And that limits, uh, it, it limits access uh, to bumblebees and, and hoverflies. And when they've had their fill and are beginning to back out of the flower, what now happens is that as the insect backs out. It will again come in contact with the stigma, but not with the, not with the receptive surface that it encountered when it was coming in. Iris is the Greek word for a rainbow. And in Greek mythology, Iris was the goddess of the rainbow. One of whose other tasks was cutting the thread that unites the soul to the body at the moment of death. Uh, it's a very large genus. There are at least 250 species spread across the world, particularly in north temperate regions, with about 30 species in Europe. Here we have just the two species, only one of which is, is, is common. So you really get very little sense of uh, the extraordinary extent to which uh, the variety in the iris is refl reflects its rainbow name. Uh, but if you pay a visit to a garden centre, you begin to get, get a better sense of just how striking uh, the irises are. Uh, this wonderful purple species uh, is widespread across Europe in grasslands. Uh, it just never managed to reach Ireland. Uh, then they have this wonderful white species here. And they're all instantly recognisable as irises, uh, even though 
when you begin to look closely, you can see the differences, for example, in the proportions of the parts. Um, in our yellow flag, uh, you remember that the, the inner tepals here are quite small and insignificant by comparison with the purple one where you can see the much larger, much more showy, etc. Or in the white one, very striking, very obviously much larger structures. Uh, or if you look at the, the style stigma structure uh, above the flag petal here, you can see it's rather, rather small in our yellow iris, but much more prominent, for example, in uh, in the white one, where it almost has the appearance of the upper petals in an, in, in an orchid, or uh, compare the uh, compare the, the nectar guides in in the yellow iris and in the purple one, you can see it's quite an elaborate pattern of li of lines all converging on the throat of the flower. Whereas here, it's much simpler, it's much more vivid, much more striking, almost and almost more insistent as to where the insect is expected to insert its 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 proboscis. As for its other uses, uh, this is the ovary, which is below the flower, where it has that little bit of extra protection away from the disturbance of the pollination activity. But after pollination, the ovary will swell to a large capsule filled, when ripe, with large uh, orange-coloured seeds. Uh, and these, uh, if well roasted, apparently, are an acceptable substitute for coffee.